right, okay, there's a little Dean Martin, uh, and uh, we've got uh, Jane uh, McCormick on the line here from somewhere Minnesota, in Minnesota. Minnesota, right? In Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay. Okay, great. Do you want to say hi to Hugh, Jane? You're Hello, right. Hugh. How are you? I'm good, Jane. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for being with us today. So I'm not sure where we're going to start. Uh, I think Stella's got like uh, a ton of stuff she wants to get into oh, here. Oh, I so. do. But I just wanted to start off by, uh, you wrote Breaking My Silence. Yes. And uh, you re it's a, basically a tell-all, reveal-all kind of book. And right. about your, your career as a call girl for uh, basically Frank Sinatra, because I don't know... Um, if you if you had been with a few of them or a couple of them or just Frank was the main guy. And by the way, that's Jane. This picture her up on the, that's her there on the left. Okay, there. well I'm glad that yes. There you go, honey. <laughs> I don't know if you can <laughs> see it. There you go. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> now tell us where you were. What year was that? Which one are you showing? The one on the st sitting on the yes, stage or you're sitting on, cards? You're sitting on the stage. What year was well, that? Actually, actually, that is when I was uh, being kept by a mobster in uh, in uh, New York City. I was at the, on the Copa Cabana stage. You were kept by a mobster. Which one? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Me yes. I was. Yes. I, I was. I, I was with many mobsters back in the day in the sixties. Yeah. Okay, but that one in particular, he. Now, I was. I was being kept by a man called Irving Holzman. Okay. And I know he was Jewish, but he was still in the mob. All right. All right. Well, I, I know that they had Jewish guys in the mob, too. Um, oh, yeah. Now, take us a little further to when you arrived in Las Vegas. I arrived in Las Vegas when I was 17. I was, I was three months from being 18 years old. Wow. Now, Jane, be, uh, let's just get that story. So was that the beginning, like, uh, of your yes. uh, your career? Like, w you know, how did you, uh, you know, where did you arrive from, and, and why did you pick Las Vegas? Well, I had a man that uh, was going to help me get money to uh, to get my children uh, uh, back. And uh, it, it's a long story. You'd have to read the book. But uh, what happens is I'm taken to... Um, Las Vegas by this fella that owned a car lot in Hollywood, California. And um, I was married at a very young age, and I'd already had two children at the age of 16. And I ended up in Vegas uh, just for chance this fella knew some people in Vegas and took me there to meet some older men and told me to go sit in the cocktail lounges and smile at all the men that walked in with diamond pinky rings. <laughs> Basically... So, and so, I was so scared to death, I said, oh, I'm not going to be able to do anything like that. Well, I ended up getting uh, kind of upset about it all and decided that I was going to make a fortune at it, and I made half a million a year from then on. So, And that was a lot the of coin. Of situation. Hmm. Jane, that was a lot of coin back in the late 50s and 60s. That was a lot of coins, yes, it was. Yeah. I mean, like, but some I people was, can't I even make very, that now. I was a very fun, fun gal. I was very, I was trusted by all the casino owners and the pit bosses knew me and could trust me with their high rollers from New York and Chicago and wherever they came from. And uh, uh, Frank Sinatra fell, fell just head over heels with me, just had a ball with me, and he could just be himself with me. And um, I used to be backstage with him and in it and, and I used to heat up his tea for him before he went on the stage. <laughs> now, Jane, you w when did you actually meet Frank? I met Frank in 1960. Uh, they started shooting in uh, June, I think it was uh, 1960, the Ocean's Eleven. Right. And that's when I met him. And, and did you, uh, you met him I at the with, Sands? Uh, with, you wouldn't believe Vegas in those days. Let me tell you, it was absolutely fabulous. It was it was a time of a time of, that, that nobody can even imagine. I mean, everybody dressed in satin and silk and chiffon, and and uh, men dressed in suits and ties, and everybody looked like they were going somewhere special. Hmm. Not like today, but then it was very, very elegant. Vegas was very elegant. 
Jane, what do you think yeah, happened? I was a very elegant chick in those days. I mean, I was um, I was on the arm of Frank and walking through the casinos, and and here I was, this young gal, and I was just oh, well, you see the pictures of me. I I, I wasn't a bad looking lady. <laughs> No. And uh, Frank and I hit it off, and uh, I, I knew Frank for uh, thir- almost 13 years. Now, was that up until the time he married Ava Gardner? No, he was married to Ava Gardner way before me. Oh, really? So it was after yeah, Ava? Yeah, he married Ava Gardner way before me. He, when, when I was with him, it was 1960, he was already divorced from Ava Gardner. Oh, okay. Now, what about Dean Martin? He he's he's. Uh, he was a lot of fun, fabulous, fun, 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 silk guy. The guy was hysterical. Did you ever? Did I you mean, ever? Gary Lewis was fun, and he was a slapstick comedy. But but Dean Martin was just hysterically a uh, funny man. I think he's one of the funniest guys I ever met. I mean. Dean would just crack you up. And Dean and Frank didn't have real brothers, and, you know, they, so they were like brothers. They always act. I mean, he acted like they were real brothers to each other. Of course. And if Dean could crack Frank up, that made his whole day. <laughs> you know, and, and Dean would do stuff to just absolutely blow Frank out of the water, you know? No. <laughs> he just, I mean, like, like Dean would walk into this, walking into the swimming pool, with all of his clothes on, his black uh, patent leather shoes, and swimming across the, the, the pool to the end and getting out. And the, the net lane and, and myself and Frank were standing there looking like, what in the hell are you doing? We're going down to Luigi's about on the left side by the sands there. We're going down there to have dinner. And <laughs> Dean walks in the goddamn swimming pool. <laughs> And he gets out and he looks at Frank and, and us two girls and goes, what you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Typical D. Like it was nothing, you know. And he keeps walking. And we just, he just keeps walking. Well, come on, let's go eat. And he's sloshing along. Sloshing, <laughs> sloshing, sloshing. <laughs> I mean, you had to be something you had to be there to see. <laughs> I mean, where do you see a man of his caliber walk into a swimming pool and swim across the pool and get out and act like it's nothing? <laughs> Oh, I know. Now, I remember you telling me something without giving, like, you know, a lot away. I personally wanted to ask you this. You were basically with Frank. So was there a code amongst the Rat Pack that, you know, because you were with Frank, the other guys didn't touch a kind of thing? Right. There basically was, yeah. Uh, one time uh, Frank wasn't in town and Dean was. It was only one time in the 13 years and Dean wanted to see what it was all about. So I went up and give him a little round the world trip and he was <laughs> I always love that expression now round the world <laughs> means what Ex- <laughs> explain to was, us lay people pretty much fun they see what Frank was what's all, what's all about with me but um not blowing my own horn but I wasn't bad um uh, 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 yeah I was with Dean once in okay. that but I I knew him for 13 years I knew Dean very well now uh D- having experienced Frank for a long period of time and then Dean that one time, my question is, which one was better? Oh, Frank, of course. Frank? Frank yeah. Yeah? So he was all that and a bag of chips, too? Oh, yeah. He was uh, the heat. <laughs> yeah, well, he was a small man, but only uh, body structure-wise. Oh, yeah. So I gather <laughs> he he was endowed. He was very well endowed. Um you know, uh, Dean used to say that they're gonna he, that he's going to have uh, Frank Sinatra's zipper put in the Smithsonian Institute. Just the zipper? You you would have well, thought they yeah, would have pickled it. Zipper, you know, because it's probably going up and down so many times. <laughs> I guess so. Now, t- that, that's really funny. Now, you've told me a lot um, personal things that from the book, and I really want the readers to read it. It's called Breaking My Silence, but. Tell us about what happened during um, Kennedy's visit to Palm Springs, if you can, just a little bit. Well, the only thing that really was weird that Frank was upset about was that Frank told um, uh, Peter Law, well, Peter Lawford, uh, Frank became buddies with Peter Lawford and put him in the movie Ocean's Eleven. Right. And basically, Frank had an admiration for Kennedy and just thought he was the wonderful, 
going to be the most wonderful president in the world. If he could become president, it would make his day. And if he could help in any way, that would make him very happy. Frank would be very happy to have helped 